Alright guys, just a quick video to update you on my home cinema, I haven't seen this in quite a while. Um, basically the first thing I've done is I've replaced one of the cone tweeters for a soft dome tweeter. Um, the soft dome actually sounds a lot crisper, um, it's a lot higher clarity than the uh, cone tweeter. The cone tweeter, I've left one of them in there because that's good for throwing the sound out. Um, you get a different type of sound from each of these tweeters and combine they sound really really nice. Um, makes a big difference. Now the tweeter that was in there... I didn't actually have any tweeters in these because I was waiting for some to be posted but um, they never came through so I've put the cone tweeter in there um, and that matches the uh, little speaker in there quite nicely actually for my surrounds. They sound quite good. Uh, I got my sofa in the end. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Pretty nice sofa. Um, that obviously used for watching films on my TV with my home cinema. Subwoofer is still the same. Got the uh, Pioneer TS. What was it? 121 SPO. I've never haven't said that word in a long time now. Just had it sitting in there. Um, things still to do. I'm going to get these covered eventually. I, I just haven't decided how to do them, uh, basically. If you've got any other suggestions, let me know. Um, I was going to do Piano Black, but I researched how to do it, and it's really hard. It, it takes a lot of preparation, a lot of patience and stuff, and you can get it wrong very easily, so I'm not going to go down that route. Um, let me know what you think I should do on that. Um, also, my receiver, I'm still using my Sony receiver for all of the mids and highs so everything you see here is connected to the Sony receiver apart from the subwoofer. The subwoofer is on the Technics bridged up. Now sometimes I have these bottom subs, that, well they're not subs, the bottom um, full range speakers on the Technics. I've got little switches back here and I've wired it very cleverly so I can switch the bottom so, um, woofers out of the Sony and they then become on the Technics. Uh, I've wired it all up, it sounds really fantastic. If I don't want to have the subwoofer on, the um, 20 hertz tuned sub down there, uh, I just want a bit of extra bass right in my face, then I can put them on the Technics, it sounds very nice. Now, I was considering upgrading the Sony to something with a little bit more power, a little bit more oomph. Now this thing down here is a Yamaha receiver. It's quite a high rated one. It was bloody expensive when it first came out. Um, the reason I've got this is somebody I know, somebody I know's dad had this and it um, it's basically stopped working. What the problem is, it's a, um, it's a relay issue. Uh, the relay on the power supply board has failed, so basically it won't power on. Nothing actually happens when you, when you press the on button, it just stays dead. Um, that is a relay issue, so I know someone that can fix that for about 25 quid. So I got this for free, so for £25 I'm going to have a very powerful, highly rated Yamaha receiver, which would be very nice. And this thing on top, I've um, actually got for sale, it's the Newmark CDN95, it's a fantastic piece of kit, dual CD player, DJ, mixer, etc. You can scratch, you've got effects, phaser, sonar, slide, you've got a beat keeper, um, it plays MP3 discs, it plays rewritables, um, it's a really, really good bit of kit. Um, I want £200 for that, um, it retails at sort of like 450 so that's quite a really good price, it's in fantastic condition, it works perfectly fine. Um, I'm just mixing on my laptop now, so I don't use this anymore. But yeah, once that gets fixed, that'll be hooked up, and then the Sony will be used elsewhere, probably. Not sure what I'll do with that yet. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about headphones. Now, these are the Sony XB500s, okay? Um, where I work, I work in Comet, a Comet store, so obviously I get to listen to and all different types of headphones all the time when it's quiet and just piss about and stuff. So I've tried all of the Beats headphones, the Beats Studios, the Solos, Solo HDs, um, basically... None of them really impressed me as much as these. The studio are very good, they're the ones with batteries in them. Because they've got batteries in them, they actually have like a little internal amplifier, so it makes it very, very loud. But because it's got an amplifier in it, it's got a crossover. So on the, on the um, Beats studios, you don't get any frequencies under 25 hertz coming through the headphones, which is really shit. Because headphones are fantastic at producing those really subsonic levels of bass that speakers can't usually produce unless you spend a lot of money. Now, if I play to you a 1 hertz test tone on my frequency generator from my mobile phone here, you can see that there is actually physically no crossover between the phone and the headphones. It plays a perfect 1 hertz. There you go, guys. Look at that. Absolutely perfect 1 hertz. See that little speaker driver moving in and out in complete time. No chopping, no clipping just real smooth movement and that's the same with 1 hertz, 5 hertz, 10 hertz any frequency this driver moves perfectly now these are special uh, long throw drivers for headphones 
they sound absolutely phenomenal. The bass from these things is like nothing I've ever heard before, even from the beats. You have, obviously because they're not amplified like the Beats, you have to turn them up, plug them into a receiver and they really, really shine. They're fantastic headphones. I recommend them all the way. Um, they do four different types. These are the XB500s. They do a smaller set, the XB300s, better for travelling. And then they do two higher rated ones, the XB700s, which are even bigger. They have even bigger drivers. And then these are the XB1000s, which are fucking enormous headphones they have the biggest headphone driver that i've ever seen in any, any headphones um, at all um, as you can imagine the sound is phenomenal from the xb 1000s they're very big um, the bass is about the same as these the the improvement in sound you get is the sound stage it's like a complete hi-fi real audio feel sound from the 1000s these are the 500s these are like a cross in between they're very nice for hip-hop um, and kind of modern music the xb 1000s sound phenomenal on any sort of music so See that? Got a bit of 10 hertz going. That's 10 hertz through the little uh, Sony drivers. They move bloody nice, don't they? Considering that is just a signal from my mobile phone. I've not got any amplifiers plugged into that whatsoever. It's just coming from my mobile phone. No crossovers. Fantastic. That's 20 hertz right there. And yes, you can change the name of the input on my receiver. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, as you guys have probably guessed by now, I'm not one to follow a crowd. So when I thought of getting a tablet, the iPad was the last thing that I was thinking about getting. I did a lot of research. Now, this thing is the Sony Tablet S, okay? It looks pretty cool. Its design is awesome. It's like a kind of folded back design there, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you some reasons why I prefer this to the iPad, okay? Yes, the iPad is very fast, very responsive. Um, you can do a lot of shit on it. Uh, but you can do more on this, I think, than you can on the iPad. It's got a lot more features. Now, it's Android-based, um, so you can add all the apps, you can add widgets, you can customise your home screen however you like. You can get fantastic kind of water fish backgrounds. Um, this is an active one. I can feed the fish by, like, tapping loads, and then all the fish come and start eating the blue, blue food. Here we go. Yep, start eating it. Right. Now, one of the best things I like about this is it's got an infrared sender on the top here so basically I'm sitting on my sofa I've got my PC I've got my receiver I've got my TV um, I can control all of these guys just from the tablet no need for apps or anything like that the Sony tablet comes with an app for this if I press down on the um, remote control app it brings up like a little this is a smaller version of it now if I click on the one up here that brings up the full version of the app so as you can see here I've got lots of different devices that I've already saved on the on the uh, tablet I've got my bedroom TV, my receiver, my dining room stereo, my girlfriend's TV etc so let's choose my TV for example now these are fully customizable um, basically I can just change the volume on the telly straight up here we go just push the volume up down and you can see the volume on the TV coming up and down although I don't really use that um, program up down, uh, source, input, TV on off Whatever I want to do, I can do straight from the tablet. I've got all the other options on there as well, AVs. Now, the best one is probably my receiver. Oh, and you can do gestures as well. So the volume up, I can just swipe my finger up, and the volume goes up, down, etc. So let's go to my device list again and choose my receiver. And there we go. So when I'm watching a film or something, rather than having to find the bloody remote for the receiver and then find the one for the TV and then my PC, have to get up and move the mouse, um, I can change the volume, obviously, from here. You can see the volume going up and down on my receiver. Let's just zoom in on that a little bit so you can see. For a beverage, volume up down. I can go to the menu settings. I can change the, the, the treble, the bass, the level, the tone, etc. from here. I can change the display. Video 2, Dolby PL, beverage. Um, everything I can do from the tablet. Got my options. HDMIs. All the different options that you might have on the receiver. Which is fantastic. Now, you're probably thinking, that's all good, but how do you control your PC from this? Okay, there's an app you can download for Android, I don't know if it's on iPhone, called Unified Remote. Now, as long as you are connected to the same Wi-Fi uh, router as the PC that you're trying to control, you can control the PC using the tablet as if it was the mouse and keyboard. So let's go to servers. Uh, I've got my server in there, that's my PC name there. Now, let's go to remotes. Uh, you've got basic input, which is just basically using the tablet screen as the mouse. So I'll move my finger on the screen. Let's zoom in on the screen a little bit. You can see the mouse is just moving with my finger on the tablet there. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, so let's say I wanted to watch a film or something. I can just go to my start menu, open my computer, 
and play the film that is in the DVD drive or go on the internet and watch a film or whatever. If I've got one saved on the machine, that's perfectly fine as well. Now, if I wanted to use the keyboard to search for something, let's go down to my web browser. So just type in whatever you want to see on YouTube. Um, I fancy watching this one again. This is a hilarious video. Uh, now it actually types it onto the PC after it spell checked it on the tablet. So although I've already written the word on the tablet, um, it's going to spell check it and only when I press the space bar does it then put it onto the PC screen. So let's go over back to there. Come on, focus. Piece of Hit the space bar and it comes up. So I say I want you to watch that video again. Very funny video. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend watching it. It's called Gangnam Style by Sai. Now to scroll, all I do is use two fingers on the tablet like this. And I can scroll up and down on the screen. Like so. Nice and easy. To right click, tap with two fingers on the tablet. And it right clicks. Nice and easy. There we go. This is a video. If you haven't already seen it, very, very funny. K-pop style. <laughs> Gangnam Style. Let's go. This is a hilarious video. You need to see this if you haven't already seen it. Look at the views on it. Now that's a little bit quiet for me. So I can actually turn the volume up without coming out of this app. Just hit the volume button there. The uh, remote control button. Go along to my bedroom receiver. Tap on that and volume up. Yes, uh, Also, because it's a Sony tablet, you've got PlayStation things, so you've got like old school Crash Bandicoot on here, which is jokes. It comes out of apps nice and quick as well. It's just very quick to respond. It's a great, great tablet. A couple of other things I picked up in my travels, guys. This is an amplifier. It is the oldest amplifier I have ever physically owned. It was made in 1973. It's Pioneer, okay? Proper Pioneer. Back in the day, retro, solid state, full Pioneer amplifier. Now, this is a beautiful amplifier. Not just in looks, in feel, in build quality, in um, it's class in its quality, the components inside, it is a really nice bit of kit. However, it has a faulty problem. Um, basically, um, this was my aunt's, okay, she's had this back in the day from 1973, bought it brand new, she still has the instruction manual in pristine condition. Um, what's happened with it is, there was a house party, there were some speakers wired up, um, the speaker wires were just um, twisted together. Basically, the wires were touched. It's called a short circuit. <laughs> Amplifier has got some blown transistors. What a shame. Now, I will get the transistors replaced. The same guy who's going to fix my Yamaha receiver down there will fix this up. Unfortunately, I wanted the original transistors in there, and you know, I want everything original how it was back in the day in 1973. Unfortunately, it's going to be replaced with modern transistors. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, it should be better, maybe. I don't know, not too sure. But I kind of like the idea of it all being as it was in the day. But never mind, eh? Um, the wire is very strange. <laughs> it's not grounded. It's just a 2AC. Into the plug. I've had to put a new plug on it. It didn't come with a plug. Standard buttons, really. Big ass power button. Fucking clunk. There's no soft on. It's when you turn it on, boom. There's a bit of a pop. Speakers A and B, you can change. Treble, bass, real click. Yeah, that is a real click and it's very heavy knobs. I love I love the feel of these knobs. Balance is behind the volume knob. Um, stereo mono mode, muting, on off function. That is a very heavy knob there. Um, good stuff. Around the back we've got a nice wooden side actually. We've got some good features. Um, these actually not too keen on these speaker terminals. A bit fiddly but I will. Um, AC outputs for other components like record deck, uh, hi-fi um, tuner. Got some fuses on the outside. Um, protection fuses, I assume, for the um, the speaker channels, which didn't blow for some reason. Tape in and out, um, pre-out and pre-in. Now this is fantastic. And um, basically, this pre-out is 
just taking the input stages with no amplification so that can then go to a graphics equaliser and come back and that one just goes to the power amp section of the amp and to the speakers so you can have it coming out of there into graphics EQ, into delay, into reverb, into anything you like and then back into the amplifier ready for the speakers which is pretty cool lots of auxiliary inputs there um, just a really nice top of the range solid state amplifier from Pioneer from back in the day when amplifiers were made properly in my opinion. Now here's something you guys will probably like, very nice looking 4 inch 4 range drivers. Um, slight similarities in the actual cone and surround design to a JL Audio W7, don't you think? Just kind of the way it looks with the black cone and the kind of really high roll surround, it could be a miniature W7 from that angle. Very, very nice drivers. These are by Dayton. Um, I just managed to get my hands on them. I've wanted to get my hands on them for a long time. They were on eBay. You can usually only get them from Pass Express on uh, American sites. They have a Neo Magnet, which is why it looks very small, but it's actually very powerful. Um, very high uh, roll surround, very high excursion design. It's got a teeny little dent in the cone there. Not nothing I'm too worried about. Second hand, no worries. I got these for £20 each, not too bad at all, um, fantastic condition, I've tested them out, here's a little clip of them moving to some bass I love you. I originally got these to just replace the Rotel drivers in there because the Rotel drivers are very old. Um, they are f fucking fantastic drivers, but they probably could do with a little bit of upgrading. Um, the sound's very good, but they do have a little bit of mechanical noise now in their age. Um, however, these are a tiny bit too small. There's obviously some sort of size difference between a ancient 4-inch woofer and a new style 4-inch woofer. Um, the gaps leave a little bit of air. The air parts out the side of them where they're not quite big enough to go in the gaps and to be honest running them side by side the Rotels did sound warmer they actually sounded more natural and less kind of I don't know modern and trebly so these would go very very nice I'm thinking a little iPod dock project uh, made from proper wood I'm going to do proper T-line a bit like the Bose waveguide system possibly using a couple of these a couple of dome tweeters I think that'll sound really really nice um, yeah awesome gonna give that a go a couple of you asked what's my TV, it is a Samsung 40 inch LCD, nothing special but it is top in its class, so of the Samsung LCDs it's one of the best. Um, I didn't have enough money to go LED when I was getting it, it's, I've had it for about a yearish now. Um, I work in Comet, I work in a TV store so I see LEDs all the time right up to the Samsung 8 series 55 inch, 50, uh, 65 inch which is a fantastic LED TV as is the new Panasonic ones but I haven't got that much money so works Brilliantly as a PC monitor for me. I'm perfectly happy with it. Awesome picture when I'm watching films, so no worries there. So stay tuned to my channel, guys. Got some car audio stuff. I'm going to sort out my subs in my car, get some new batteries, get a new head unit. Um, that'll all be to come. I'm going to do some little interlude videos in the meantime, like this. Little things I've done here and there. Bit of stuff in my studio. Just keeping you guys interested. Stuff that maybe you won't see from other car audio um, YouTube posters. So I'm just going to do some fun stuff with audio. And fun stuff with some technology. So just stay tuned. I've got some cool stuff on the way. So see you later guys. <laughs>